PowerPoint comes up. <laughs> is that an actual game? Yeah, oh, yeah. let me put that so you guys can see it. And what I want you to look at this particular menorah is that it has eight, nine. Normal menorahs have seven. Okay. This one has seven. Now, today we're talking about Hanukkah, right? Mm -hmm. Hanukkah in English means Feast of Dedication. Remember that word, Hanukkah. This is the menorah. And if you notice, like I said, it has eight. Well, that's when I said eight, because we don't count the, the center one, right? So we, we caught, we're talking about the eight. And this is the dreidel, so the tops. So we spin the top. And then we have what is called gilts, which is coins, or something that you're going to bargain with. Right? So, and then everybody knows the Star of David. So we're in, Hanukkah is for eight days. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we have Hanukkah for eight days. And, um, and if you notice, now when you look at, when we're looking at the tops, they also have symbols on them, and we all recognize them to be Hebrew symbols. Mm -hmm. Right? And we're going to go into that just a little bit more. Um, and then, let's go to the next slide. The next one. I hope all my thing came up good. And what's the story about Hanukkah? That's the big thing. That's the big question. What's the story about Hanukkah? The Jews does it. All right? But what's the big thing about Hanukkah? You know, this is the thing that we see all Jews do for eight days. My children always thought Hanukkah that um, everybody who were Christians, you know, got gypped because eight days they got gifts for eight days. Christians is just one day. So my children would always say, your parents didn't don't do Hanukkah? Man, you're missing out because you only get gifts for one day. I get gifts eight days for mommy and daddy and everybody else. That's how it's done. So, so let's fast forward to the next tape. Yeah, they are, yeah, my children thought that, you know, what happened? We were messed up. Yeah, see, you're missing out, Peter. Listen up. You might just get, if you practice Hanukkah, it did mommy. So, question is, is Hanukkah in the New Testament? Yes. No. Don't know. You're going to find out. Remember you did that? Learned that from you. <laughs> is Hanukkah in the New Testament? Is Hanukkah in the Bible? Yes. Where? In the New Testament. Where? Maybe in the dedication of the temple. Where? Is Hanukkah in, is... I know it's not in the Bible, but... Okay, it's not in the Bible. It's okay, the Bible. it's not in the Bible, okay? I know it's not. Okay. Um, is anybody a say yes? It's always good to have, you know, different. Nobody is have an opinion? Let's go and see. Next. I'm going to give you a little bit about it. Like we said, eight days the Jewish celebrated, known as Hanukkah or Hanukkah. That's not where you come from, you know, right. tomatoes, tomatoes. It commenced with rededication during the second century BC. Right? So we're giving it where the, the Maccabees. The Maccabees were Jewish people. Right? And at the time, they were under slavery with the Greek Syrians, right? So they were the slaves to the Greeks and the Syrians back then. So, um, so the Maccabees were actually a family. They were, they were a family, and this is what the family name was, the Maccabees. Um, okay, let's go to another one again. Okay, then I just give a picture of the Maccabees. The Maccabees comprised of father, four sons, right? So, and of course, you know, they were not blonde hair, blue eyes, right? Okay, so we're gonna do the next one. And, oh, this didn't come up good at all. I was giving you a little family tree of the Maccabees, but I guess you could look it from your book. You know, we start, the, the father's name was Matthias. And then he had his five sons. And then, but he died early on, but his sons carried on the name Maccabees. Okay, next, since the sons look so good. Let's do the next one. The Maccabees, so we're talking about this, right? They're a Jewish family. They started the, revol the revolt. And what was happening, the reason why they got angry, is because the Greeks now wanted to sell, wanted to use the Jewish temples 
and do sacrificial. And they, of course, everything they were like to sacrifice was a pig of everything else. We all know that's not kosher. So here you coming into the temples, the synagogues, with um, to sacrifice the pig. And then some of the Jews were kind of converting to that. And he was like, no, that's not happening. So that's what started the revolt. That's what started the whole thing. It was like, no, it's not happening. For our, if, bad enough, you brought your gods. Second of all, you're bringing a pig. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's not happening. So that's what started all of that. So, next thing. And I was, oh, see, my picture just came out real terrible. We're supposed to be showing just a little picture of so the Maccabees. Yeah. And then the next one again. So Hanukkah, the Maccabees restored their temple. Each year the Jews celebrate this cleansing of the temple of Hanukkah. The priest from Judas, Maccabees' family, became the newest ruler of Judah. Right? Judas took over the land and had been part of the kingdom of Israel. Judas was actually the name change of the Maccabees in the end. Now, the Maccabees, you're not going to find it in the Bible, but just like how they have the works of Josephus, mm -hmm. there's also the work of the Maccabees. So that's where I'm pulling some of that information from. But we're still asking the question. So is Hanukkah in the New Testament? Is it in the book of Maccabees? This it's part is in the Hanukkah. book of Maccabees. But my question still, that of mine, is yeah. Hanukkah in the Bible? It is. It's it's not called Hanukkah, though, right? I mean, because that Bible's not Jewish. Exactly. But I gave it an English version. What did you say it was? Yeah. John. Uh, the dedication of the temple. John. It's a John. Get it pretty close. Let's continue. Oh, X. I know, I know, I know. Keep on going. Better cost. We're going to see. Next, next one. No, I did not read the slides. <laughs> The Jewish, okay, we're just doing it again, so I could be really, really, really that, that the Jewish revolt was against the Greek led by Judas. Remember, Judas Maccabee mm -hmm. was, okay? And then, then my pictures now came out. Let's hope they came out a little nicer. We were doing, um, I was doing the temple. This is, you see, over here, she put a picture of the pig. And, you know, they were showing the gods, so this is actually <coughs> in the temple. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's a no-no. That's a complete no-no in the temple. So that's why they got so mad because they had these Greek gods. And then here, right here, there's a sacrificial pig. That's not happening. So, next tape. And then I'm showing here, you know, we're talking about the menorah. We're talking about the scroll. Remember, they're wearing the talit. Mm -hmm. He's wearing the headpiece. And he's having on the breastplate. Remember that breastplate with the 12 tribes on the breastplate? Yeah. So that's what you dress, that's what that's what the priests dressed like when they're in the temple. Okay. Next slide. No, the gilts. They're coins. Now I'm giving y'all, you know, I'm trying to go to the pictures so that I can really explain. The gilts are the coins. They played with the drill, the tops, and the gilts. Right, they played a game with it. Now, the gels were used back then, but then it didn't have to necessarily be gels. And I, you know, that's what the traditionalists talked about now, mm -hmm. because they have the candy, the chocolate candy. Mm -hmm. But it's not. But it could have been anything to bargain with. You know, you're bargaining with you know flour, rice, whatever it is it may be. You know, so that's how you're gonna play the game, right? So, and then. Um, we're going to talk about the menorah next. I don't think that picture came up too good either. Why my pictures came up messed up? Okay, when we're talking, talking about the menorah, right? This one is called a shamash. This one is called a shamash, right? We have you heard something similar to that. The shema. Shema. All right. Hero what does the shema mean? Our yeah. God is one. Listen. Here. Right? Listen attentively, right? So the shema lights each candle. Remember I told you, God is on the right hand. You don't start God on the left. So you're starting from here down. Right? Because God sits on you. Right. Right. So there's a significance in everything. So the Shema, which is... Now give me some other words for the Shema. 
I mean, some of the things that you think the Shema represents. We know it means here is real. It means unity. to listen. It means unity. That's correct. But in the God, when your people talks about the Godhead, where do you think it fits? Remember now, this is the light. Who is the light? God. Jesus. Well, Jesus is the light. Sure, of the world. right. So he brings the light to us. Shema. Right? So remember, we're talking about Shema. So he's, he's light, so we're light. So, every, so you use this to start lighting. Light it. Every night you're lighting one. Every night you're lighting one. And it sits in the window or someplace that can be seen outside. Because God so let your light shine. Let your light shine. And then shall see. So let your light shine. Right? So this is the, so this is the Torah, that, that is, this is the menorah that is used for Hanukkah. If you know second says eight. It's not, it's not the seven. Right? So that's what this one represents. And I guess that each one is lit. Now, some people say, when I've done research and some of the Orthodox Jews say it represents the feast days. We're talking about Pentecost, Shavuot, Yom Kippur, different things. And we, we mean, we're going through all of them. And they're saying, all, you know, because this, no, we have all the eight feast days, but this one. There's no one, this, this one doesn't have a feast day. Remember, it's the Shema, the Shema, right? So, ask the question again. So the next slide now shows none of my slides are coming out nice. Let's go Should again. we turn the light off? Will that help? Maybe that might help. No, things didn't come out right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when we talk, so now we're talking about the Hanukkah itself. Now let's talk about a little bit about. The whole purpose of Hanukkah, which is the oil. What, we're backing up now. I give a little history on that. We're backing up. We talk about the Maccabees. Remember, right there was a revolt. Mm -hmm. What started the revolt was the fact that here was these guys got tired of these people sacrificing pig to a pagan god in the synagogues, and they decided to just say, "We had enough." Right. So they decided to say we had enough. Can you give it to me? I can use it. Okay. So they decided to say we had enough, right? So therefore, in this situation now, um, they went on and they started fighting. And they had, you know, and they was like, you know, we had enough, we're gonna fight. We're gonna go down fighting. I can't take this from the Jews who are converting and from the Greeks who are doing this. I can't take it. I'm, I'm had enough. They won. But when they got back, they realized they didn't have enough oil in the temple to make it last for eight days. Right? And it take, I remember now they're using olive oil. It took eight days for this olive oil to be made and be able to go to burn in the temple. They only had enough for one. That's the miracle of it. They only had enough for one. But yet... It lasted, that little bit that they had, it lasted that all of eight days to give the new oil time to be made. So that's where you see on Hanukkah, you will see them doing things like this, they, everything is fried. They have enough fried turkey, they have the donuts, I'll they have the, yeah, everything fried. <laughs> They're doing everything fried because it represents the oil. oil. It represents okay. the oil. So everything is fried. I mean, you get everything today is going to be fried food, fried food. So our diets are off. You know, <laughs> everything is fried. You know. So that's where that oil comes in with the Hanukkah. And then, then you ask, well, you know, what does Hanukkah mean? And I said, it's dedication, ded feast, ded dedication of the feast, right? We talked about that too. And then we're talking about now the dreidel. The dreidels. The dreidels are, let me get it, let me get it. The dreidels are tops, little tops. And you might be like, well, what do these little tops do? Right? They spin. Little tops, they're spin. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm going to pass it around a few. And they have symbols on them. Mm -hmm. They have symbols on them, right? 
And then when it comes to these symbols, they're, he they're Hebrew symbols. They're Hebrew symbols. How does that work now? You see, when they was under Greek and the Syrians, they didn't want them to practice their religion. So what they would do, they would hide. And whenever anybody came around that was a Greek official or anything like that, they would turn it into a game. And they would spin the top. But they didn't realize that it had information on it pertaining to the Torah. Mm -hmm. It had information on it. So why they were spinning that top to turn it into a game for the children? And so, when, and the, so the kids, the children still learned the Torah. So that's where the dreidel comes in, with all these different letters on it. Okay. Right? So, and, it, and on top of it, we're talking about this, you know, um, when he has the shin, which is like, looks like the hand, right? Hev, Gamil, none. And you're going to learn what each one of them signifies, right? So, and it represents the words, a great miracle happens. When you put it all together, a great miracle happens. Now, a great miracle happens, yes, in the, to in, in the temple, because keep in mind, eight days, they didn't have enough oil. But God made that little oil last for eight days. So this is the meaning, great miracle happens. Now I'm going to throw another question. Did Yeshua celebrate Hanukkah? You still sticking with yes? Anybody else have anything else? Did Yeshua do Hanukkah? Well, I can tell you he didn't do Christmas. No, she did. <laughs> <laughs> that I know. He didn't do Christmas. That I know. I know that there are some Jews that don't celebrate Hanukkah. They, are they don't consider it an official holiday. It is not a holiday that God commanded us to do. That's for sure. You know when he says you come to him at Yom Kippur, you come mm -hmm. to him at Passover? Right. It is definitely not a holiday to come to him. Mm -hmm. But did he celebrate Hanukkah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess somebody do a little bit on the fence there, aren't you? <laughs> not sure. He said, I'm not sure. Let's, 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 let's turn to the next slide. Hopefully I can see. One more. It's really tired. They have to read it from paper. I'm glad I, I know. I'm so happy you printed it. The dreidel, <coughs> I think it says it. The dreidel is a spinning top, right? Mm -hmm. And each mark different Hebrew letters. Nun, Gemil, He, Shin. The custom of playing the dreidel on Hanukkah is based on the legend or the history. This is a legend, but I said the history. That during the time of the Maccabees, remember the word Maccabees? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when Jewish children were forbidden to study the Torah. They would define the decree and study anyway. When Greek officials would come close, they would put away the books and start and, and take out spinning tops, claiming that this one just playing the game. The letters on the dreidel are the first letters in the Hebrew phrase that mean a great miracle happens here. Right? And then we're going to say, in Israel, the letter P for the Hebrew word U, meaning they here replaces the letter shim to spell out a great miracle here. And down to the bottom, we also have what they mean, right? Okay, how the game is played now? Let's look at how the game is played. We're going to turn the page to Yeah, that's just how that looks. It showed up so much nicer on my thing. And I got a few. You know, we can't play the game without something else. We got a few gilts. We got a few gilts. Yeah, money. Money. My children never, we never played with this with my children because I thought that was too easy. So we played for chores. That's how we did it. 
Who get to take out the trash this week? If you if it was normally your week to throw the trash in, they would write notes that saying, you know, they would tr they would throw that in into the pot. So in other words, if I end up with all of the chores, well, then, uh, <laughs> who normally did the chores? Right. You know, they put that thing in. You know, or they would say, I'll do your chores for the week or stuff like that, right? So that's how we did it. That's good bargaining. Huh? That's good bargaining. Yeah, I, you know. So. When you spin, let's say each game is given an equal number of pieces, such as the coin, candies, like I said, etc. You can put it, you know, at the beginning of the game, each round the player puts in what they feel they're willing to lose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so whichever money you're willing to lose, whichever you know, how much chocolate you're willing to lose, the whole one, just a piece, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, if it ends up on none, now I need y'all to remember these words now. Which one is none? Because y'all don't play. The third, fourth one. It's house. Right. Means you get nothing. Means you get nothing. Okay. Right? Remember that, because we're going to take this out. Y'all need to remember this. And you might end up winning, and what you really lose, because you don't know, you don't know the signs. Right? And remember now, in Gamel, right, you get the pot. So you always want to get this one. Get the pot. And in the shin, you get half of the pot. Right? This one, you gotta put back some money in. <laughs> so this, you get nothing. This, you get the whole pot. If you spin the top of the ends up like that. This, you gotta add to the pot. And this means you get half of the pot. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Remember, half the pot. Mm -hmm. Mix it up just a little bit. Add it up. All the pot. Wow. See, I just need to know all the pot. That's all the money. Right. All the pot. <laughs> this means nothing. None. This means I gotta put. Okay. So that's how the game was was played. Okay. Right? So this is how they taught them how the, the tour. This is how, and, and, it, and, and remember what it means, a great miracle happens here. So then I'll ask you again now. Is Hanukkah in the New Testament? Mm. Oh. Nope. Okay, let's go again. Uh oh. I'm asking the question again. Yes. Yes? Okay. Let's find out. Jesus is burnt. I get it. How to change it? What does that say? And it was in the temple in Solomon's porch. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. So, what is Hanukkah called? The feast of dedication. And what time did it happen? Winter. And where? And what are we in now? Winter. Oh. We're in winter. And so did Jesus celebrate Hanukkah? Yes. yes. <laughs> and is it in the Bible? So do I get yes. extra? <laughs> you didn't spend the top. <laughs> but I stood with yes all the way through. <laughs> so, only if you were afraid to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I went with the spirit on the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.